Renee had an idea, and an idea that everyone probably thought was crazy. Really high quality housing that suited all people and could allow people who had probably had the least and started behind the started line the best uh, opportunities in housing. All of that grew out of the work between Eckbert Perry and the integral group and myself and hundreds of other people. You had to have both the public sector and the private sector come together to create this new approach. She was the representative of the public side of the public-private partnership with our firm when we introduced the holistic community revitalization model into the city and in our work at transforming Techwood and Clark Howell homes into Centennial Place. And if there wasn't a Centennial Place, there would be no East Lake, there would be no West Highlands, there wouldn't be any of these communities. This model is what's used across the country. All people are children of God with unlimited human potential. This was not just about, well, how do you build some buildings and how do you finance it, but it was also how do we humanize the issue. Every week, Renee Glover and I and then other people from the Housing Authority would come out to East Lake Meadows and we'd meet with Eva Davis and Shannon and other folks on the planning committee to work on what we wanted to do together to help create a healthy neighborhood that connects people with their dreams and aspirations. And she listened to the residents, she listened to the planning committee. Um, her and her team, they, they worked with us. You couldn't walk in, start talking about, well, you know, mixed income and this and that and these financial requirements and blah, 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 blah. You know, nobody wanted to hear that. You know, they wanted to know, okay, who are you? What are you about? Are you gonna stick with it? And what are you gonna do? She was leading the charge from the public sector and actually had the audacity uh, to suggest that the federal government needed to modify and amend its approach. We used to go up to HUD together in Washington and you could see the people quake in their shoes when this brainy, reserved woman would walk into the building with the convictions of her conscience. When we went in to meet with the HUD officials, we always had an agenda. We never went in there without something specific that we had thought through, laid out, and we generally needed to have answers. You talk about calm, cool, collected, uh, especially under pressure, and that is absolutely Renee. We gave her the name Terminator. She's tenacious. Um, you can't wear her down. Renee gave me my first job in this industry. She just became very supportive of every move that I've made in my career. Renee Glover was my boss, my mentor, and has become my dear friend over the last 25 years. She helped me become who I have become. Renee Glover is my North Star. I follow her lead because I know how much she knows, and I, uh, I trust her, not just her instincts, but her intellect and her experience. Our family moved into East Lake in 1971. Our family was the second one to move into the community, and I was two weeks old. But over the years, it started to transition into a community filled with drugs, shootings, prostitution, activity that would not be a great makeup for a community. You know, people were sleeping on the floor, 
or in bathtubs because of all the crime and all the horror that was going on constantly. Eva Davis, in the first meetings, she made it very clear who was in charge. And she wanted better living conditions. Uh, she wanted safety. She wanted um, resources. At eight, she was teaching me how to make, keep records and do all of these things. So it be kind of, I, I became like a backup. But that's where I understood her vision because you're seeing the fails and the triumphs that are going along with the work that she's doing. And you're, you have a front seat. You're a witness to it. You know, I thought about this and I said, wow, you know, she was literally just a kid, <laughs> you know, when we started this work, a little teenager. She brought a voice that was really important to this work. Knowing what young adults wanted and needed in their community, knowing what young adults envisioned for their families, their children was really important. And so her voice, I think, was essential. And that just passion and drive to make a difference that she learned at that early age continues to just drive her in her personal and professional career. That she's creating her own legacy as well. And I've watched Shannon on a local level, uh, regional, national level, really seize opportunities to have a larger platform bigger than herself. She's helped us think about strategies with other communities. She's spoken at our conference on several occasions. She's just been a great voice for how to do this work with both excellence and equity. I still have to take it in. It's still sometimes overwhelming. And sometimes I just can't believe the work that we did and to continue to see it moving forward. Shannon had the, the blessing of being Eva Davis's granddaughter. And Shannon radiates all of her grandmother's commitment and understanding in everything that she does. Shannon is great. as I've known Shirley, she has been really behind the scenes making things happen and not the person in the front of the line until she became mayor. And Shirley early on said to me, she said it's really about this holistic and integrated approach. You know, when she was mayor, she couldn't focus on one thing. It had to be all the pulling all the right levers that worked. Surely, for me, is the mix and the articulation of bringing together the East Lake blueprint. The emphasis on mixed income housing, cradle of college education, community wellness, economic development, and a community quarterback to really drive all of that work with partners and with stakeholders. The stakeholders for a project of this size and magnitude are much broader than just the developer, just the housing authority, uh, just the philanthropists, just the civic leaders. And for several years, uh, I worked directly with the Neighborhood Association, uh, the NPU, and with the foundation, helping them to, to understand each other. When she became mayor, she did a great job supporting this kind of work, supporting neighborhoods throughout Atlanta. And then after she left office, she joined Purpose Built Communities as our executive board chair. And that's really where I got to know Shirley the most. It's right after my reelection in 2005, Tom called me with this idea that he wanted, in fact, to form a separate organization and that he thought that I'd be someone who should be engaged in that. Working closely with her at Purpose Built Communities, she helped create our vision, helped create our strategies, um, 
created relationships with other political leaders around the country that created invitations for us to be able to work in different communities. She's been uh, an essential part of this work and somebody who I, I love and admire. It was perfect for Shirley. It gave her a chance to take that skill set and take it broadly and help move a lot of other communities along. And Shirley was always a community development focused kind of person. The work of Purpose Built is hopeful. It says that yes, we have problems. Yes, we have differences, but we can overcome those differences and we can work together in productive ways and we have a model for doing that. What I really love about Cheryl is how she is deeply passionate about making a difference. I think she's a fabulous human being. She's been very supportive of what we needed at East Lake. She's been involved. And at the end of the day, she still it, understands that there's still work to be done. We got to this place over 400 years. 20 years is not enough to overcome it. So the East Lake Foundation has years to go. Without Renee's leadership at the Atlanta Housing Authority, this could not have happened. Without Shannon's voice, on the planning committee, we would have missed the mark. And then without Shirley's leadership, we would not have been able to achieve the kind of impact around the country. And they are really models for the nation of what is possible when you commit your life to being in service to others. They are, for me, women who are living legends.